Good day, learners, and welcome to another lesson in Philippine history and government. Today, we will be discussing about the Philippines under the Japanese military. World War I, also known as the Great War, began in 1914 after the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. His murder catapulted into a war across Europe that lasted until 1918. It was called the War to End All Wars. The major causes on the, other, on the other hand of World War II were numerous. They include the impact of the Treaty of Versailles following World War I, the worldwide economic depression, failure of appeasement, the rise of militarism in Germany and Japan, and the failure of the League of Nations. It was in the 1930s when Hitler's troops occupied Austria, Czechoslovakia, and Poland, and then invaded Norway, Denmark, France, the Soviet Union, and the rest of Europe. America and Britain consequently imposed economic sanctions on Japan. America froze Japanese assets in America to prevent Japan from using these to her advantage. Britain renounced her commercial treaties with Japan. Those were the techniques used by the other foreign countries to prevent Japan invading their lands. The imperialistic design of Japan in Southeast Asia couldn't simply be ignored. The Commonwealth government feared that the country would be the next target. Because of that, they had a compulsory military training of the able-bodied Filipino youths under the supervision of General Douglas MacArthur. In July 1941, the Philippine Reserve and Regular Forces joined forces with the United States Army known as the United States Armed Forces in the Far East, also known as USAF, placed under the command of General MacArthur. The Civilian Emergency Administration was likewise organized. The Philippine National Red Cross conducted practice evacuation drills in Manila and in other towns. The first simulated blackout was conducted in Manila on July 10, 1941. In October of the same year, the whole archipelago experienced other simulated blackout. Entry of Japanese Imperial Forces one of the allies of America is the Philippines. The Philippines was still getting used to the American colonial lifestyle when World War II 1939-1945 broke out. The Japanese assault in the country was meant to cut America's lines of communication in the Pacific as Japan sought to expand her empire in the region. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese forces bombed Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, where the main base of the United States Pacific Fleet was located, which results to the death of 2,897 men. The Japanese also launched offensive attacks in different countries, such as Malaya, Hong Kong, Guam, Wake Island, Midway Island, and Philippines. On that tragic day, President Theodore Roosevelt asked the U.S. Congress to declare war. The general offensive plan of the Japanese was to acquire the Dutch and British possessions in Southeast Asia, which include Malaya and the Dutch East Indies, now Indonesia. And in order to carry out this plan, the Japanese Navy and Air Forces had to destroy the U.S. Pacific Fleet. At the dawn of December 8, 1941, Philippine Standard Time, the Japanese bombers under the command of General Masaharu Homa conducted air attacks in various places of the Philippines. They destroyed the air and naval defenses in Davao, Togegarao, Baguio, Iba, Tarlac, and Clarkfield. Generally, the country had few planes to assault the enemy forces from that time, and at the same time, they were surprised to the sudden attack of the invaders. In the afternoon of December 24, President Quezon, together with his family and war cabinet, moved to Corregidor. Other top officials in Manila were commanded to stay behind for the welfare of the people during the time of crisis. On December 30, 1941, President Quezon 
took his oath of office as a president of the Commonwealth, marking the commencement of his second term. He immediately, immediately, Laurel was sworn in a secretary of justice to take the place of Abad Santos from that time. And the vice president from that time was Osmeña, Sergio Osmeña. To spare the city of Manila from further destruction, in December 26, General MacArthur proclaimed Manila as an open city. When, when, when we say open city, it's like the enemy forces may freely enter the said city provided that they would stop destroying it or they would stop shooting the people. During that time, the northern and southern armies of the USAF were retreating to Bataan. Almost everywhere there was a panic and fear and only radio broadcasts was the only um, medium left to give updates to the Filipino, both to the Filipino and to the Americans. On January 2, 1942, Japanese forces had already entered in Manila. For many days, people stayed in evacuation areas. In the midst of attacks in the Philippines, President Roosevelt urged President Quezon to flee to the United States. President Quezon and his family left Corridor for Australia on February 18 on board submarines Swordfish because they believed that the Japanese could inevitably use him as the leader to rally Filipinos behind Japan. From that time, many Filipinos thought that Japanese would only take or would only stay for a month or three. They believed as well that the Japanese would help them to be free from the Americans. General MacArthur left Corregidor for Australia on the night of March 11, 1942. On this day, Yusuf was deactivated, replaced by United by the United States Army Forces in the Philippines, or USAFI, under Major General Wainwright. From then, Wainwright promoted to Lieutenant General on March 21. In April 9, Bataan under General Edward King surrendered. At first, the Japanese refused to recognize the surrender because they wanted the whole archipelago. But Given the situation during that time, they accepted it. That march began in Mariveles and Cabcaben on April 10, 1942. The Filipino-American troops were forced to march from Bataan to San Fernando, Pampanga. In May 6, General Wainwright decided to surrender Corregidor and the harbor ports to General Homa through the voice of Freedom Radio. General MacArthur radioed General Sharp that Wainwright's decision was not valid and he ordered Sharp to initiate guerrilla operations against the enemy forces. The battered Filipino and American soldiers submitted to the enemy forces. On January 3, 1942, General Masaharu Homa announced the end of American occupation and imposed martial law in the country. Manila, from that time, became an occupied city of Japan. The Japanese Occupation General Homa allowed the laws then in force in the Commonwealth to stay for the moment. He ordered all public officials to continue discharge their duties. Jose B. Vargas, who was then the mayor of Greater Manila, had been instructed by President Quezon and General MacArthur to cooperate with the enemy. Vargas then ensured to have peace and order and maintained public utilities such as water, electricity, and transportation restored. Three weeks later, on January 23, 1942, Vargas was appointed as the Executive Commissioner of the Central Administrative Organization of Occupied Philippines. 
wherein he had to coordinate the activities of all existing administrative departments in the Philippines and to see that all commands of the Japanese commander-in-chief were carried out. Imposition of curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. and finally from midnight to 6 a.m. from May 18 onwards. Blackout in Bataan was lifted on May 4, 1942. Arbitrary arrests and executions were done by Kempeitai, a military police. Any time of the day, many were executed on mere suspicion of being with the resistance movement. Other offenses, punishable by death, were arson, murder, robbery, spreading rumors against the Japanese forces, cutting military lines of communication, spying and printing of anti-Japanese leaflets. Violation of Japanese orders and laws were considered hostile acts, which meant death penalty. The schools were again made open to public. Books used before the war were again utilized except the ones with pictures and stories about Americans. Japanese language and culture were thought and disseminated. Various contests with attractive cash prizes were held to encourage further study of the language and their culture. Worsening food crisis, the people suffered from deprivation and starvation. Life had become harder for most people. The railroad train became a common vehicle of smuggling rice to the city of Tutuban Station. Another trade that prospered during the era was the making of fakes and forgeries. Due to scarcity of food, medicine, and basic services, thousands died of malaria, malnutrition, tuberculosis, and other diseases. In the midst of turmoil, still there were Filipinos who kept their faith in God and waited for the liberation of the country. Reforming the Philippine Government On December 2, 1942, Calibapi or Kapisanan sa Paglilingkod sa Bagong Pilipinas, a non-political organization, was established. Its aim was to bring about the rapid construction of the Philippines and the rehabilitation of the Filipino people. This organization was designed to coordinate all activities and services of associations' individual concern. From that time, Jose Vargas became the ex-officio president and Benigno Aquino was appointed director general. In October 14, inauguration of Republic of the Philippines Laurel as the President of the Republic. The Japanese worked for the enlistment of the Philippines into the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere, a long-range economic plan for Japanese conquered territories. And that's it for today's video. I hope that you learned something today. If ever, if you have time, kindly share your learnings and realization in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more lessons to learn. Bye!